this whole cheating thing is has been a fairly major conversation in my circles for a bit now um and we we talked about this yeah you were gonna talk about uh so like he quit tarkov yeah what the f you quit tarkov yeah it's That's... weird i've been playing this game for six years yeah i know yeah and so he just like messaged me on discord just like out of nowhere yeah i quit tarkov i'm like yeah a, I don't believe you, and B, what? Really? Well, I quit for well, now. No, I, I, I believe you now that you explained why, but like, like yeah. let's talk about that. So, uh, Tarkov was made by a developer called BSG, um, and it's a, it's a really fantastic game because, like, okay, so I know some people aren't going to like firearms. My grandpa was a Marine, and then he got into the police force afterwards. He used to train me doing drills down in Arizona, all the type and stuff, so... Tarkov's customization level with firearms is completely... A feature for him, a bug for me. Yeah. It's completely <laughs> unquestionably unmatched. Like, yeah. it's it's absolutely wild, the degree that they went to. All these different systems that they have in the game, the medical systems are really just amazing. Uh, there's all yeah. these different components the of the game. The fact you can get, like, hit in a particular spot and have to use a particular kind of first aid, like... Yeah, like you can have, there's different types of bleeds and you need different types. You need a certain type of bandage for like a light bleed. You need things like a, a, a cat for a heavy bleed, something like that. Like there's all these, it's, it's a, the game has an insane amount of depth. I've, I've played EVE online and the depth in Tarkov feels like it like competes with it really heavily. And yet it still has that action, that shooter yeah. action. Yeah. yeah. There's really, really intense moments. Like there's, it's really, it feels extremely unique. There's a few games that have tried to come out and be Escape from Tarkov, but like more for normies. And but it just, then it's not Escape from Tarkov it anymore. It never really works out. Like honestly, even as someone who is a relative normie, I enjoy Tarkov more than I'm sure I would enjoy something that's trying to be Tarkov because it's, um, I don't know, you're just kind of along for the ride. I mean, part of it is I'm playing with these guys, right? So. I'm just like, dur, 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 dur. I'm going to have a big backpack on and I'm going to put a backpack in it and then I'm going to put a backpack in that. <laughs> it's fun running around with Lionel. Russian nesting backpacks. <laughs> um, but like this most recent wipe, and it's, it's always fun near the beginning of a wipe because no one has cool gear. Like as, as a... So, okay, the game wipes every once in a while, your character loses all of their uh, custom stats, and you have a stash where you can store all these like different firearms, body armors, medical supplies, money, whatever. Um, every once in a while, there's a wipe. You lose all that stuff, your character fully resets. Wipes are actually really fun. I know a lot of people are going to think like, oh, you lost all your progress. Yeah, but now everyone is on the same playing field yeah. and you're playing with these like janky guns. So the recoil and stuff is horrible. You're going to like run up to someone and they're going to have like an AK. 74 um that like doesn't even have a buttstock so they try to fire and it's just gonna like fly all over the place and it's just very interesting but this wipe comes around the beginning of it is really fun having a ton of fun with it and then they patched some things that made the game better but those patches introduced randomly invisible players kind of an issue not only are they invisible but nothing that they do registers on your side so if they like throw an item on the ground, it's invisible to you. If they make any amount of noise, you can't hear it. If you sh if you know one hundred percent where they are and you shoot them, nothing will happen. They take no damage. They like and they can see you. They can interact with you. They can kill you. They can take all your stuff. Really, really frustrating. At the same time as that's going on, uh, Google it. It's AK seventy four. Um, at the, at the same time as that kind of stuff's going on, um sound is like super messed up completely messed up there's no real functioning vertical audio sounds are just coming in completely random directions like i'll watch someone walk like left to right in front of my screen and hear them like back there and it sounds like they're upstairs like it just <laughs> nothing makes any sense with audio uh crazy lag all over the place everything is just super wacky so you have invisible players which people eventually figure out how to intentionally do so they can make themselves invisible. Uh, and it happens to people at random. And you have audio coming from all over the place. And cheating is a genuine major problem in every single multiplayer game that exists. Yeah. So you were saying there's like a big Tarkov creator that 
what like cheated to find cheaters or something like that like cheated for science the, that is not public yet because that video is not out um <laughs> Cool. And I mean no offense, but they're not they're not that big of a Tarkov creator. But they're cool. They make cool stuff. They're growing. They'll get there. I believe in you. I mean, should we just promote them at this point? Or like? Sure. Yeah, it's it's Goat Moth. He's gonna be making a video, which we kind of just ruined. I'm sorry, I apologize. Well, we didn't ruin but it, we hyped it. It's genuinely fascinating. It's wild. Because he does this whole thing. Wow, I'm just gonna completely ruin it. I'm sorry, bro. <laughs> I'm just, gonna go into it. Okay, I, guys, just go subscribe <laughs> to help yeah, to help yeah, yeah. make it up to him. The the O and goat is a zero. Go go find him. Um, so he. Oh man, wow. Oh, I hope he's okay with this. I'm just gonna send it. Um, the worst that can happen is he can never talk to you again. Yeah. And tell er everyone he knows about what an <laughs> utter piece of untrustworthy <laughs> shit you are. So, yeah. No, for sure. Yeah, it's not that bad. I've had worse. <laughs> Um, it, it's it's deeply fascinating. He showed me um, a bunch of clips where, and you have to go watch it because the feeling that you get from it is actually really interesting. And it might only happen to people that have played Tarkov, but I think you should watch it anyways. Because, like I said, cheating in every single game, if it has multiplayer, is, is rampant, to be completely honest. It's yep. genuinely rampant. Yep. Um, Cheats are so sophisticated now. Joe just linked. Is it public? Oh, this is from two months ago. Yeah, he made that video two months ago. Um, but yeah, cheating in, in, in games is rampant. You see people get caught that are streamers for cheating. Like consistently. Yep. Yep. It's happening all the time. We've had people uh, get pulled out of live events, professional players on professional teams getting caught live because they loaded stuff onto their mouse that when their mouse was plugged in the computer, it would inject and then give them whatever advantage. Like... There's cheaters at every level, and there's tons of them. The problem with Tarkov is there's very little being done to stop them. Right. Very little. There's no way to watch a replay of the match after the match is over. Um, and whenever I mention that, people are like, oh, it's uh, I, I don't want kill cams in Tarkov. I'm not asking for a kill cam. I do not want there to be additional information that I could give to other people that are currently playing the game. But once that match is fully complete... It would be good if I could watch it back because Tarkov has horrible servers. It has horrible desync. It has horrible tick rate, all this type of stuff. So it's really hard to tell if someone is uh, aimbotting you or if there's crazy desync and you just haven't seen them come around the corner yet or whatever yeah. else. So people have known that there's tons of cheaters in Tarkov forever. There's a bunch of ways to be able to know that, but people have known for a long time. But the degree of which has been hard to tell. Sure. There's a type of cheating that people have known about, which people call ESP, which is essentially wall hacks. Right. You can see through walls, right? Um, <laughs> is it going up? Oh, yeah. It Did just we went up 300. Up? There we go. Good. Uh, there's a type of cheating in, in, in Tarkov called ESP. Not only can you see through walls, but next to people's names, you can see their name. You can see their KD. You can see their, their full inventory. You can see the things that they have picked up in the raid so far. Wow. You can see where they're facing everything. And that is effectively, for BSG right now, not detectable. How is that even possible? And because there's no replay system, there's no way to see people's perspectives after the match. There's no kill cam. There's no uh, Counter-Strike style Overwatch system. There is nothing... If that's the only way that they're cheating, they're not actually aimbotting, they're not fly hacking, they're not clipping through walls, whatever. They just know where you are all the time. Which in Tarkov is everything. Absolutely obscene level of advantage. Yeah. You're like never going to know. So what he did was he wanted to look into how bad this, this thing is. Sure. And I don't want to spoil the whole video. Well, they're all going to watch it. But yeah, you do, you do need to watch it. What he did was he went out and did the bad. He got an ESP. Right. Because the only way to figure it out is to go do it. And what he would do, and I'm not going to tell you how because you got to go watch the video, but Goat is publishing the video now. That's probably good. <laughs> <laughs> what he would, okay, I'll, uh, yeah, I don't want to spoil it too much. Man, I don't want to screw him over. Spoil it a little. It's okay, fine. Okay, it's okay. fine. He would test people. So he, yeah. he, he brought on like a code of rules because he doesn't want to spoil the game. 
right? He doesn't want to make the game worse for legitimate players. So he would just follow people around that he thought was cheating. He refused to kill any actual players under any circumstance. Okay. So sometimes he'd be following some around and an actual legit player would come up and kill him. And it, it is what it is. He just has to go into another match and figure it out. Sure. But he'd follow these people around and watching how they would react was so interesting. Took him a little while to figure it out. But there's been this thing in Tarkov for a long time, yeah. which people call the wiggle. It was where you're, you look at someone and you just lean, lean peak left, lean peak right, and do it over and over again. So your character just goes like... Yeah, what does it mean? Like friendly or like... Back in the day, if it was two non-cheating players that saw each other, it was a way to indicate, yo, like, I'm cool. We're friendly. They've added VoIP to the game now so you can talk to each other. That's not really necessary anymore. So legit Got players it. don't really wiggle anymore. But if you can see the other person at 600 meters through three buildings and a mountain right. because you're wall hacking and they wiggle at you and they're staring right at you, well, you can wiggle back. So cheaters so he, are using it. He figured out that people were doing this as a sign of like, yo, I'm also a cheater and friendly because there's no possible way they could see you. Right. So he would just go harass people. <laughs> and, it, cause, and he would, so like, and if you were a normal player, you'd have no idea that he was there, right? So he's not actually bothering any normal players right but because there's a lot of stuff that you just to be clear like it's not like for those of you who don't play tarkov I, which by the way i totally understand um <laughs> it's pretty intense it's fair um there's lots of things that you can do in a lobby that are not just pvp yeah so there's there's like kind of like uh missions that you can complete and all that kind of stuff so just because there are there's a wasted slot in the lobby doesn't mean all of a sudden that this this instance is now completely broken no, and totally imbalanced. Not a problem. He actually probably was not hurting the gameplay experience for the legit players in the lobby at all. I, I seriously doubt that he was. And like, there's legit players that killed him. It's also when he was showing me some of these clips, it was it was soul wrenching because he would follow these guys around for like a long time, and you're convinced inside. You're like, nope, these guys are legit. Like they haven't looked at him. They haven't wiggled back. They haven't done anything. Like, good, good. Yeah. And then he's still following them. He's still following them. He just doesn't give up, doesn't give up, doesn't give up. And then one of them will look over and through multiple walls, just... And the second you see them start leaning back and forth, it's just... It kills you, man. And the amount of times that it happens is deeply disturbing. It's like almost every match. It's also whole teams of players who run up against a four stack of players that are cheating. And confirmed, because it's easy to confirm. Right. Because you can't see each other. And, oh, right, his cheat thing. Yeah. If there is no line of sight, it shows a green box around them. If there is line of sight, it shows a red box around them. So you know 100% if they can see you or not. <laughs> and he'll even do things like he'll pull his knife out. Yeah. And then they'll pull their knife out. You can't see each other. You're too far away to hear it. He'll even have people that like, they can't see him and they'll be like, oh, why do you have your knife out? They can't see him, bro. Like, it's so brutal. That's it's so brutal. terrible. So I, I like, I can't. <sighs> Knowing that there's like going to be a cheater in every lobby. Yeah. Why would I play this game? How's that even fun? Yeah. And like, sure, they're not rage hacking. Like people talk about, oh, I get killed by like fly hackers in Tarkov like every match. No, I don't believe you like at all. And after watching Goat doing this deep, deep dive, I don't believe you even more because now I know what they're all doing. Almost all of them are just running these. And ESPs so and basically for someone like you that is actually respecting the integrity of the game, which is a very, it's a very sim like game. Yeah. You know, there's, there's no, um, you know, it's, there's no Halo style radar where if people are around you and moving, you just have a dot that shows you where they are or whatever else. Like, it, you actually rely on visual confirmation. There's no outlines showing whether people are friendly or an enemy. Well, and there's camouflage, too, and that's a huge part of the game. Yeah, like, camouflage actually serves a purpose. Like, it's very sim-like. And so what you're essentially realizing is that nobody is actually playing Tarkov. Yeah. People are just playing 
run around and dunk on people who are trying to actually play Tarkov. Well, and, and like that's that was one of the weird things about him showing me a bunch of this footage as well is like he he'd run and hide in some bush, and a player would just cruise right on by. And instead of being like, yeah, you're playing Tarkov, you hit effectively and he ran by, I'm now like, oh, like, what a cool dude. <laughs> He's playing the game legit. I'm like proud of this guy who's not killing Goat right now because, not because he's not killing him, but because he's not cheating, so he didn't know that he was there. <sighs> Apparently the video's, the video's live now, so you can go check it out. I think he was planning on releasing it tomorrow and all this stuff, and I just ruined everything, but whatever. It's probably for the better. Uh, my bad. You can hate me later. Um, but yeah, I that, that I don't know. It soul crushed me because I, I always had this like assumption because every once in a while someone would get you, and it's just like, man, like really? How did they possibly know I was there? It didn't feel like an aimbot. It didn't feel like anything else, but I was just like, come on. Like, I... I was very stealthy. We have multiple people on this team. Like maybe uh, Joe and I will be flanking from different angles and they like perfectly transfer and it's a really big angle. All yeah. this like weird stuff where it's just like, man, like I just don't really believe that. And now it's like, well. Like it doesn't yeah. even have a kill feed, for nope. example. Like which you, is good, technically. Yeah, which is, which, is, which is true to its sim nature. You actually have to, you actually have to see the uh, opponent drop. And you have to not just see them drop; you have to see them not be picked up. Uh, and Unless you're be, cheating, and it can then be, it tells you they're dead. Yeah, and it can be hard to keep an eye on them because you got maybe maybe they've got friends. You don't know if they have friends because you can't. It's not like everyone's in a party of three or a party of four. You can't take that for granted. Um, it's it's a super cool concept for a game, but I'm looking at it now, going, man, you know, was every match that I was ever in compromised? Probably. And he asked me a really interesting question, I thought, which was how much cheating is acceptable? Right. Because, because you have to understand at some level, there's cheaters in every game. There's yeah. cheaters in Warzone. Yeah. There was cheaters. I don't know about League of Legends, but I know back in the day, Dota, uh, the, the Warcraft 3 mod Dota, yeah. there was cheaters in that because you could remove the fog of war. If there's a multiplayer game, there's going to be at least someone who's finding an unfair advantage. And there is no way that companies are going to be able to defeat this completely on their own because, uh, like, how are you supposed to detect someone taking an external video camera that isn't plugged into the computer that just looks at the screen yeah. and performs actions onto a motorized mouse? Yeah. You cannot detect that. Nope. Nothing's even connected to the computer. Yeah. So there's like, sure, no extra these... software running. It's not. It's not reading memory that it wasn't supposed to. So like Battle Eye or or whatever the heck whatever company has that's supposed to detect cheaters is never ever going to detect that. And people do do that type of stuff. So the solution is to bring back the physical LAN party. But he, okay, so that actually helps a ton. That helps a ton. But like I mentioned, there's still people that cheat on sure. LAN. And then when you catch them. <laughs> you shame them and they never get to come again. Yeah, they're they're banned forever. from banned every life. game. Yeah. The, now they can't play anymore. Yeah. I think the stakes are a lot higher. They definitely are. In person. I, I seriously doubt there's uh, like there's there's no possible way there's as many people cheating on land. But like it, it's an interesting question, right? And it kind of comes down to the reason why Tarkov is currently ruined for me. Yeah. Is because I am now deeply questioning Every single engagement I ever have, win or lose, doesn't matter. Yeah, and that's that's not that's not fun. No, it's kind of like uh, oh, okay. You know what I find really not enjoyable is uh, like you know that I play badminton. I get pretty competitive. Well, I get pretty competitive about anything. Yep. And I'm really passionate about badminton. I love it. Um, really enjoy it. Um, I I. I as someone who's always trying to improve, I love playing with higher level players because they they push me to my limit. Right. But one of the things that I don't enjoy is playing outside of a competitive setting. I love playing ladder nights. Um, I love playing anything where, where the, the match matters. And the more it matters, the better. So my favorite format to play is like a point differential format where every point matters because it's like a team format 
and the oh. the winning team is determined by the total point difference That's in your cool. matches. I like that. Um, so I always so the more everyone's fighting for every point, the more I enjoy the experience 100%. because. It's not. I would rather lose narrowly than win by a big margin. Totally, it's kind of my my general philosophy. Yeah. Um, and I don't enjoy playing when the other person's not trying. You know, when because like the integrity of competition matters a lot to me, and I think you're you're the same way. Um, and so while I enjoy playing with players who are much better. I, if if I feel like it's a total waste of their time and they're giving it like a sixty percent effort, I'd rather we both just conserved our energy. Yeah, I, I I would I want it. I don't mind losing as long as I can reflect on that situation and figure out how I can do better moving forward. And maybe that's not an immediate thing. Maybe in a in in like a shooting game, it's like okay, I need to sit on some aim trainers because honestly, this guy kept his aimer on me significantly better than I kept mine on his, and I lost because he's just better at the game. Yeah. It's like, okay, well, I, I want to practice that. Someone just mentioned in the chat, Valve just banned 40,000 players from Dota. We do need to talk about that. Yeah, so like, it's not it's not just shooters either. It's super cool. They put a honeypot into the game. So there's like a, a particular memory, um, like, a, mem a, like a, a chunk of memory that had some kind of useful data, but that they made it so the game would never actually look in it. So only third-party applications were checking it. That's and so they basically just went, yep, with a very high degree of certainty, we can tell that every single one of you who uh, checked the values in this, I think it was, was it RAM or was it storage? I can't remember. But anyone who looked at this is a cheater. Bye bye um, See you Good. later. I mean, for a free-to-play game, like realistically, they'll be back with a new account and whatever. But, but still, they lose whatever they had. Whatever they had. Which is good. Um, at least inconveniencing them is good. Tools of Ownage says, and we've actually talked about this. Um, you know, I, I I think I've I've gotten less certain um, seeing the the catastrophe that was Stadia and the complete lack of newsworthiness of anything that's going on with. I don't even remember what Amazon's game streaming service is called anymore. I mean, Nvidia's had some big wins lately. They announced that partnership with Microsoft, but uh, Tools of Ownage talks about well, the solution could be game streaming. So that everything is server side, everything that yeah. wouldn't help with something like a camera pointed at the screen and like the mouse playing the thing. But I, other than farming gold or something, you know, like there's an old reference, you know, <laughs> wow, wow, wow style, right? Um, you know that I think I think that if the cheat gets to the point where they're not even sitting in front of the computer anymore, <laughs> I think a lot fewer users will be incentivized yeah, to do it. I think the, the problem that I'm having with this type of stuff is is how intense it is, you know? Yeah. Like, it's, it's, it's very overwhelming. Um, but yeah, things need to be done about it. Yeah, game streaming, though. Uh, the, we've talked about how that could be the reason. Like, I, I, I talked about, like, gaming experiences that are impossible... Um, with everyone, uh, with everything done client side, like like massive environments or you know massive, massively multiplayer games or things like that. But I think getting rid of, or well, not getting rid of, but dramatically reducing cheating could be a major incentive. There's there's some interesting stuff too, like certain cheats uh, that people use for Tarkov. You can't actually run if you have Valorant installed. Valorant's super invasive, like ring zero, ridiculous anti cheat will find the Tarkov one and freak out. Wow. So there's another thing where, like, part of this argument wants me to almost wants me to, like, I almost want my gaming computer to be like a specific device for gaming. Like, I almost want my gaming computer to go more into the, like the console direction. Where it's like, okay, well, yeah, I sat here on WAN show and got mad about Valorant's Ring Zero anti cheat, but at the same time, I don't I'd want be cheaters in my game. Pretty okay with like installing a separate SSD or partition or whatever, and just having that for only games, and I use it for nothing other than games, and I just let invasive stuff come in, and people are gonna bring up, oh, they can look at other. I don't know what the exact perfect answer is, but like. This ain't it. <laughs> is is what I have to say. Yeah. 